sharing my screen. Please, anyone can mute uh, herself or yourself. I'm See my screen. Yes. So, uh, our session is uh, based on uh, GeoGebra. First, uh, we will discuss uh, what is GeoGebra. So, GeoGebra, it's a uh, dynamic mathematics software. This is we are using for teaching and learning mathematics. And basically, it is used for all the levels of education, like we can use for higher education, for primary education, and higher secondary educations that cover most of the topics like geo, uh, geometry, algebra, spreadsheets, graphics, uh, graphing, statistics, and calculus in one inch. Yes. So what are the uses and features of GeoGebra? Yes, so we will uh, discuss in detail when we go to the demonstration of GeoGebra. So once uh, I just want to give you the usage and features of GeoGebra. So first use of GeoGebra, it was created to help the students to gain the better uh, understanding. And second, we can use this uh, software for active and problem oriented. We can give the problems and the student can solve the problems with the help of the software. Third, uh, practical mathematical experiments. If you want to make the simulations, then you can make the simulations here. And practically, you can explain uh, each and every topic. Fourth one, ready to use applets. We are also having the uh, ready to use uh, resources are here so that you can use in your classroom teaching. And last, uh, teachers and students both can build the animations and the simulations in the GeoGebra. Next, uh, what is the availability of uh, GeoGebra? As we have already uh, discussed that uh, you can download this GeoGebra online version. You can log in into www.geogebra.org. And if you want to download this uh, app in your system, then you have to just type www.geogebra.org slash download. So in the meanwhile, we are uh, going for uh, hands-on practice for GeoGebra. Uh, I would like to request to everyone to please download this app. Next, uh, once when we download this app, we have a home page of GeoGebra, yeah, which okay. will be looking like this. Uh, left hand side, we can see that this is the algebra window. And the right hand side, this side is uh, known as the graphic and the geometric window. And what are the components of GeoGebra that we will discuss? First uh, is the graphic features. So we can plot uh, many functions with the sliders and we can solve the equations here. And uh, for the geometry, we can make uh, interactive geometric constructions like uh, we can make circle properties and we can solve any other theorems related to the parallelogram and uh, trapezium. So all properties we can discuss in the geometrical part. And we are also having a 3D graphic view. So in the 3D graphic view, we can uh, give the example of graphic functions, surfaces, and many more 3D objects. And, uh, there is a CAS, CAS, which solves the mathematical problems with a powerful algebraic system. So here we also having a scientific calculator to solve the various maths problem. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets uh, are basically based on to analyze the data and uh, we can do the statistics problems here. And the last one is the probability. We can uh, explain the probability by visualizing the concept with the help of GeoGebra. So these are the features. So what are the examples of using GeoGebra? So basically in this session, we will focus on hands-on practice for GeoGebra. We will do some activities uh, with the help of this GeoGebra features. So first example, uh, we can see visualizing 
students can see and the teachers can see the abstract concepts. They can give the values, they can give the further values uh, with the use of sliders and input boxes, check boxes are here. And representation and, and experiments, okay. students can make the connections. They can make the connections, what angle is there and what the length is there. So they can make their own connections and they can discover that, their properties of that particular topic. And you can also observe that you can explain this property with the help of this property, with the given property. Okay. Geogebra geometry. For the geogebra. Uh, for the geogebra geometry, the window will be like this. We can remove the x-axis and y-axis and the grid axis. And mm -hmm. here we can also explain the parabola. And this is the geogebra 3D view. We can explain uh, the void and the three-dimensional figures with the help of geogebra 3D. And these are the examples uh, of spreadsheets. And so why we are using this, why we all mathematicians know about the GeoGebra because it is very easy to use interface and it covers many features like uh, we can create, we can modify and uh, we can share mathematical problems and the simulations with the students and the teachers. They can make their own models and uh, it comes with the multiple platforms. Like uh, we have uh, tables, graphics, spreadsheets, geometry, algebra. Okay. So everything in one umbrella. Yeah. So we, this is very useful for the mathematical purpose. So now I'm going to demonstrate GeoGebra software. I yeah, think uh, everyone uh, has downloaded this. Some yeah. feedback is coming from website. Yes, I know uh, actually. Okay, I'm trying to switch. Okay, just to wait. Okay, the students. Okay, so stop sharing on my screen. So have anyone downloaded this uh, GeoGebra window? Can anyone see something? Please? Is anybody download this app, GeoGebra? Okay, if you have not downloaded this, uh, I can also show in the, from the Chrome, how you can download this uh, app. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen. Is screen visible to all of you? Yes, later. Okay. So I'm. So we will just type so in Jepler. Dot o r g. So this is the window. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So this is the window. We can see that this is uh, here. We have a start calculator and the maths resources. So uh, in the right hand side, you can see that uh, there is a calculator suite, graphic calculator, geometry, 3D calculator, nodes. So basically, we will work on GeoGebra Classic. So everyone can open the GeoGebra Classic. So we will work on that. And, uh, but before that, I am showing one uh, some resources that are ready to use resources. So when you click on the resources, here we have uh, some mathematical resources, the main topics it has covered, like algebra, geometry, measurement, number sense, operations. So in algebra, it covers the topics, mathematical expressions, multiplications, order of operations, 
and mm -hmm. in the geometry it covers angles, coordinates, polygons, mm -hmm. triangles, and for the middle school, some higher topics are also mm -hmm. there. Angles, congruency, Pythagoras theorem. So all topics we can observe. Mm -hmm. And once when you click on these particular topic, you can uh, you can explore that topic. Okay. So now we are working on GeoGebra Classic. So basically, I'm using I have already downloaded this app. So I'm using this app in my desktop. So I'm stop sharing my screen. So here we have app downloads here. So you can download the app and you can use it. Okay. So Till that time, the participants stay stay here only on this sort of learning part as well. Okay. Now, can everyone see my screen? So this is the GeoGebra window. Yes. Please message me and you can also unmute yourself. Do you have any query? Okay, background noise is there. Actually, uh, my coordinator, Nitin Ram, is also there in this room. So I would like to request um, that please unmute yourself. Okay. Okay, so this is the algebraic, uh, this is the GeoGebra window and left hand side part is the algebra and the right hand side, uh, right hand side we can see that this is the topic view. So first uh, we can explore the tool uh, in the top most you can see that this is the tool bar. So when you click on this triangle, so this is the moment you can move any figure, any point to from one place to another place. And if you want to move around the point, then you can use this feature. This is the free handshake. If you want to make a free handshake, then you can make it like this. Okay. And uh, pen, if you want to use a pen, then you can use this. Okay. And uh, in the right hand side, this is an undo option. You can also undo it. And second one is the point. If you want to plot a point, something here, this is, you can use. Okay. And uh, Point on object you can use and intersect you can use. So these are the list of uh, tools that you can use under the point. Second is the line. If you want to make a line, then uh, you can uh, use this. Just click it on like this. Okay. And uh, again, I'm doing undo. So if you want to make a line segment, for the line segment, we need two points. So first, we will take two points. This one and this one. Now we can make a line segment here by joining these two points. So instruction is also there. So once when you click on line segment, so in the drop down, you can see that we have instruction like uh, select the two points or the positions. So I'm selecting two points and their positions. So next, uh, if you want a segment with a given length, then if I want to draw a five centimeter, then I can write five, then five, side, uh, five centimeter line segment is here. So this is all we can do with the help of this tool. Fourth is a perpendicular line. If you want to draw a perpendicular line, a parallel line, perpendicular bisector, so there is a condition, there is an instruction, what steps you have to follow. So if I want to make a perpendicular bisector, so what we have to do is, we have to select two points and then one segment. So first we have to create, we have to select the two points. So I'm selecting two points. Okay, I'm selecting this point. This and this. Okay, now line segment or line segment from A to B. And if I want to draw a perpendicular bisector, so now this is the perpendicular bisector. Right? So this is the perpendicular bisector of line segment AB. Okay. Yes, we can see, please. 
Okay, please slow. Okay, I'm going to slow down. Okay. Next, uh, if you want to draw a ray, then you can also use a ray. For the ray, we have instructions select starting point, then point on ray. So I'm selecting this starting point, then I can draw a ray. Okay. Next, uh, so perpendicular uh, bisector, perpendicular line, angle bisector, you want to draw a tangent, then you can also make a tangent. So one by one, you can explore the features, change it up. Fifth is the polygon. So I can make a polygon. I can also make a regular polygon. So how to make a regular polygon? For this, I want to make a regular polygon with eight sides. So just type. So how many vertices? I want eight vertices. So I'm clicking on it. A regular polygon. Right? And if you want to move it's all the points, then you can also move by clicking on move option and I'm moving this. Okay. I'm moving this regular polygon. Okay. Right. But if you want to draw, but if you want to draw a rigid polygon, right, then what we have to do? We have to select all the vertices and the first vertex, then select the polygon. So I want to draw a polygon. So I'm selecting this as the first point. Okay. Then second point. So I'm drawing a polygon with three sides. So this is a polygon with three sides and it is a rigid polygon. Okay. So also, if you want to make a polygon with four sides, you can make it like uh, this. For this, uh, we need four points. So first, we will draw points. So this. You can make a rigid polygon. So with this one, then this. Let me use some of this. Select all the vertices, first vertex again, or select a polygon. Okay, I'm doing it again to make a rigid polygon. I can use the points here. So, this is directly I can make the rigid polygon. So, we don't need to point plot. Uh, we don't need to plot the points from the this uh, from this tool that uh, select the position or the line. So now I'm going to uh, give you a three D graphic view of the same. So once when you see uh, there is a, in the right hand uh, side corner there is an option graphic CAS geometry. If you click on geometry, then you will get the geometry view. And if you want to see this images in 3D graphics, then you just click on 3D graphics. Then we get the 3D view. So as we have uh, made this uh, figures uh, in two-dimensional, so it shows only in two-dimensional way. So if you want to draw a three-dimensional figure, so like if I want to draw a cone, then uh, there is an uh, select the bottom point and then the top point. So I'm selecting this is the bottom point and then this is the top point. Then I have to give the radius, length of uh, measurement of radius. So I'm taking six. So, so I can use move option and I can move my figure. So this is the 3D beam of home. You can explain in the classroom this is the uh, base of the cone. This is in its circular shape and uh, 
this is you can explain that this is the height of the cone and if you want to show the radius then you can also explain the classroom this from this to this is the radius of the cone so many features you can explore here and you can explain in the classroom right so again i'm going to my graphic window yes i can see some message in the chat box can you repeat this once again ma'am yes sure So how to get this graphic, uh, this 3D view, there is a, uh, if you are uh, using this GeoGebra app uh, online, then there is an option in the top. Uh, there is a circular option in the top. So when you click on that settings, then we will get the 3D graphic, 3D view. So when you click on 3D view, we will get this window. So again, I'm going back. Then... So this is like a graphic, okay. So in the graphic, we can see only the circular part in the XY plane. But if we want to see this cone in the 3D view, then we can use this. So in my, now please repeat it again, okay. So this is the graphic window. And if you want to go to 3D view, there in the arrow, there is a 3D graphic, okay. Just click on 3D graphics, right. So we will get this 3D window. And uh, so when you click on, uh, so I'm taking another, so I'm removing it, deleting it, okay. So I'm delete and then I'll take a new one. So if I want to draw a cylinder, right, then click on cylinder. Then what instructions are there? Select two points and then enter the radius. So now I'm selecting two points. Okay, select two points. Two points means uh, one point from uh, x-axis and another point from y-axis. So this is. Give the value to radius. So I'm taking four. So this is a cylinder. So if you want to look all around, rotate the 3D graphic there in the last option, in the last we have a Rotate 3D graphic view. So I can rotate this one. Right. I hope it is clear to you. I would like to request to everyone is if somebody has uh, any doubt regarding how to use uh, the particular tool, they can unmute themselves and they can ask directly. Okay. So this is we get it from uh, rotate 3D graphics view. Okay. Uh, I could have one more question, ma'am. How can we uh, how can put the alphabet letter? Okay. So now I'm going to that one. So how we get it? So now I'm going to gain a graphic window. So this is uh, we have a graphic window. So if you want to write something here, then there is a tool, the second last option. So when you click on this tool, some options are here. So here we have an option ABC text. So we have to click on ABC text. Here we can write anything if you want to solve any equation, then you can write here. So I'm uh, going to explain factorization of polynomial. So for this, I'm writing a polynomial equation, okay? So for polynomial equation, first I'm writing x, then how do you uh, take a power of x? So there is an uh, option for symbols, right? So we are using basic symbols. So in the basic symbols in that right, uh, in the um, right bottom, we have a square option. So this is, I can put x square. And now for uh, plus sign, we can use this one. Okay, here we have plus minus, all signs are here. And also you can use your keyboard for plus. x square plus 3x plus 2. 
So now I'm going to factorize this polynomial equation. So how to factorize this polynomial equation? I think it is clear to all of you how we are, uh, uh, how we can write uh, this uh, equation in uh, uh, in graphic window. I think there is one question. So can we do this in projector? Yes, you can use in the projector, sir. You can use in the projector. Okay. okay. So x square plus 3x plus 2 is here. So I'm just clicking on OK. So x square plus 3x plus 2 is here. So how to solve this x square plus 3x plus 2? So basically, first I'm using this uh, feature of pen. So first, we will take x square. We are splitting the terms. First term is x square. Then we will take another term, which is 3x. And then third term is 2. So what is the meaning of this x square? x square means we need to make two squares. Uh, we need to make a square with length x and breadth is also x. 3x means we can make one rectangle. But as uh, x is multiplied by 3, so it means we are means one. So it means we can make a square. We can make two squares with length one unit. So how we are going to do this x square plus 3x plus 2, how will we factorize it? Okay. So for this, we will make a x square. First, we will take the x square. So how will we, uh, we are going to present x square? We are taking rigid polygon. So for rigid polygon, we don't need to take points, different uh, individual points. So just click on this. So I'm taking X as three units. Okay, you can also take uh, X as uh, uh, four units, five units, and other units you can take. So I'm taking X as three units. So I'm making a square with X three units. So I'm using, again, I'm using pen. So this length is x, right? And this length is also x. Is the area of the square? The area of the square is x square, right? Now, now we are going to make a three rectangles with the unit x. So again, I'm using rigid polygon. So you can make some horizontal rectangles and some vertical rectangles. So vertical rectangle. One more. You want to make a replica of this rectangle, you have to just click on it and we get the replica of this. And now I'm making one more rectangle with the three units, okay, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, and 11 to 12, okay. So this is what we get. So what is the area of this rectangle? What is the area of this rectangle? Can anybody say it? Can anyone? Can anyone tell me what is the area of this rectangle? You can mute, you can unmute yourself. Yes. Can I get the area of this rectangle? Okay. Three. Right. So we are taking x equal to three. So it means uh, this unit is one and this unit is x. And x is three. So x into one is x. Right? So here x plus x plus x, what we get? We get 3x. Right? Here this is 1 and uh, here we have, here is x. And here we are having 1. And what we get it now, this is x square 
we got it x square and we got it 3x. And now we are going to make two squares. Okay. So how to make two squares? We will again follow the same procedure. Rigid polygon. Then first, second, third. So one into one. So we have a, a square uh, with area one unit. And again, one more area. Square with area one unit. Think, okay. You can delete this. Clicking here. Squares and the rectangles, just click on, just right click on the picture. Okay. Then we can see in the bottom, we have object properties. I think one message in the chat box is going is okay. So just click on object properties. So we have the properties for particular object. We can change the dimensions. We can change the style, advanced, scripting. So I want to change the color of the square. So I'm using this uh, green color. So if you want to, okay, you can apply green color. This is we can okay. Uh, wait a minute. Object properties show object. Okay. Apply this. Okay. Maybe some okay, I can use for another object. Okay, this is the boundary, this is the big big. Like, like right? so we can change. Okay. So similarly, I can change the color of this rectangle also. Just right click on it, take properties. Then another color, you can dark the color, right? And I'm using color option for this also. Okay, so okay. Yes, you have to click on the object. And two more squares are here. So we can use check properties for this also. And I'm changing the color. And one more square is also there. So the blue color. Right. So now we are adjusting x square plus 3x plus 2. So we can move all the figures. By using this option here. So now I'm adjusting this X, then another one more X. So what we get? Here we get X square plus three rectangles. 
means x square plus 3x, but two more squares. So again, in move option, again, we can move the object. It's not I can make a uh, one more the uh, rigid polygon. Okay, this is can we? So what we get? So we get x square plus three x plus two, right? So what length is this? What length is this? Can anybody tell us what length is this? This length is x and this length is one unit and one unit. So total length is yes, can anybody admit themselves? Please tell us what is the measurement of uh, this side? X plus two. Yes, x plus two. Thank you, ma'am. And what about this? This length is one. So, what is the total length? X plus one. Yes. Sorry. X plus one. Yes. X plus one. So, what is what will we get? We get x square plus three x plus two is equals to x plus one. X plus two. So, this is the problem that we can solve in the classroom. Student can explore how to factorize the polynomial equation in addition or they can also explore what we get in if we have an equation in subtraction. So is there any idea about if I have an equation x square minus 3x plus 2? Can anybody give the idea how we can explain this equation with the help of change in the classroom? Very help me to find the solution of this equation. Okay. So I can make a solution of this uh, x square minus 3x plus 2. So again, I'm using this option move. So this is, I am removing all my figures. So this is uh, what we get. This is not moving. Why it is not moving? Okay, so I'm deleting this. So this is we have x square. Minus 3x means we have to subtract 3 rectangles, right? So I'm subtracting 3 rectangles here. So 2 I am subtracting vertically and uh, 1 I will subtract horizontally, right? So for this we can make one more rigid polygon because it was not working. It was not moving so we will change the color first. We will change. Okay. Right. What we get. So here we get we are subtracting two squares two times. So it means we have to take two square one time, one more time. So this is what we get. So this is x square, this area, this area is this part. This part is the remaining part. That part I have shaded here. So what about this part? This part in the left hand side, this is uh, x minus, what part is subtracting? Okay, so I'm removing my other. I think it is uh, visible to all of you. So this part will be uh, from total. Total part is x and uh, we are subtracting one unit. So it will be x minus one. 
And what about this? This will be x. Two part is subtracted, right? This one and this one. So x minus two. Hope it is clear to all of you. Is there any doubt regarding x square? How to uh, explain x square minus 3x plus 2 equation in the classroom? So then again, we will draw the same figure and uh, clearly I will be explaining the class. Yes. Is there any doubt? Yes. Anyone want to ask something? Okay. So now I'm going to explain one more question here. In a click window. So this is we can remove the exists and uh, okay this is I'm using new window. So this is, uh, I have deleted all the options. If you want to save the file, then there is an option. You can save uh, in your system and uh, you can also save online and you can share with your uh, students also. So here we have the option for uh, open and save as, so you can save in the system. So now I'm going to explain the circle properties. Neither. So now I'm going to draw a circle with center and radius. So I'm taking radius six centimeter. This is a circle with the given radius. And uh, here we have seen the term tangents. So if you want to draw the tangents, so how we can draw the tangents here? And so that we can explain the circle properties in the classroom. Select the point or the line then circle only for function. So I'm selecting a point. So this is, uh, I'm selecting a point. So here we have us, and we can also set the line style. So select a point or line. So first we have to draw a line. Okay, then we can make the tangent. So I'm drawing a line segment. For drawing a line segment, we have to take a point. So this is a line segment. And if you want to draw a tangent, then you can draw a tangent. Select point or line. <laughs> yes, we have one question now. Can I copy this uh, graphical representation and paste it on the words for question paper? Yes, sir. You can uh, copy this uh, graphical representation and you can paste it, sir. Yes, sir. I think uh, I'm doing something. It is very. Okay. Is very much in uh, in I'm doing something wrong with this for drawing the tangents. Uh, select point or line. Selecting, I've already selected a point 
underline. I think. Okay. Point C. Maybe some. So okay. Uh, this is uh, we can use the line. Uh, segment option. You can make another point here, and you can explain what is radius. Then all properties you can explain in the classroom. And uh, if you take some more points here, yeah. this is the circle. Okay. Again, I'm drawing this. Okay, I'm drawing one more circle. And here I'm plotting some points. One point is here, another point is here. This one and this one. So now I'm actually I'm explaining one of the topic, one of the theorem in this meeting. Angle in the same segment of a circle are equal. Right? So and one more property. Angle subtended by an arc. Angle subtended by an arc is always twice any remaining part of the circle. So we will take some angles here. This is we can use the angle property. So you have to for angle, you have to select the three points. This, this one, and this one. So what is the measurement of this angle? 117.87. And now, what is the measurement of this angle? This is 58.94. This is just half of 117.87. Uh, and you can also take the measurement of this angle. So this is same as, so you can explain in the classroom, angle in the same segment of a circle are equal. So these are the properties that you can explain in the classroom. And uh, these are the circle properties. And many more properties like uh, you can use the distance or length. You want to make distance. If you want to measure the distance of this point from this point. This is you can also mention. Right? You can also explain the triangle properties, polygon properties, all the properties you can explain in the classroom. And if you want to see this figure in 3D view, 3D graphics, then you can also explain this much in the classroom. Right. So in the pyramid uh, base extrude, so we uh, have one more option. There is a net. So for net, uh, we can, if I'm drawing a cube here. So how to make a cube? Select the two points or other corresponding objects. So I'm selecting two points. So here we have a cube. So if you want to see this, so here I'm getting this two cubes are here. So you can explain uh, two cubes make a cube white. This topic you can explain in the classroom. And uh, if you want to see the net of this particular cube, then use net option. So this is the net. This we can explain what it looks like when we are using net of cube, right? These are the various features of algebra that you can use in the classroom. And you can make your uh, teaching more interactive. And uh, one more thing I want to uh, show that uh, I want to show you some virtual lab. So for virtual labs, so I'm sharing again, I'm sharing my screen. So what is virtual labs on uh, Diksha? Can we share to students on WhatsApp? So uh, you can uh, use uh, the sharing option. There is a link. You can uh, share the link with the students in the WhatsApp and then they can you know, open the link and they can see the simulations itself.
So what are the uh, virtual labs on Diksha? You all can see my screen. Pictures of virtual labs uh, aligned was aligned with CBSC curriculum, interactive three D simulations, and uh, you know, intuitive feedback and guidance simulations are here. And uh, what uh, other features uh, we have theory and procedure in the virtual labs, animation and video simulations are also here. Simulations that provide the real time experience of performing experiments. And some viva was is also there for self evaluation and feedback that improves the resources from the user's perspective. So this, uh, these are the available resources which is available uh, for mathematics. So these are the topics: angle at the center, area of the circle, right circular cone, right circular cylinder, area of cylinder. So these are the topics which are available on virtual labs. So this is the Diksha homepage. So how to reach to virtual labs? So this. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to reach to virtual labs on Diksha. So I'm stop sharing. First, I'm stop sharing my screen. And then this is I have used my new tab. Just type Diksha. When you type Diksha, this is the home page of Diksha. In this last dot, we have virtual labs. Virtual labs, just click on explore. So these are the virtual labs which is available on Diksha from class 6 to 12. So I'm showing one of the experiment from class 9. This is simulation based experiment. So right in, in the right hand side, you can see that this is the table of content. And in this table of content, we have a PDF of that particular activity. So if you want to explore simulations, then for this, you have to click and just to search the explanation resources. Because in explanation resources, we have simulations and animation videos. So I'm going to explain you what uh, we have in uh, this simulation. So I'm explaining one of the topic, uh, area of trapezium, which is available on Diction. And you can also freely use uh, this virtual apps in your classroom. So I just clicked on area of trapezium. Just now I'm clicking on area of trapezium, this link. So once when you click on this link, we get the theory, which is related to the topic. What is uh, how we are going to show the area of trapezium and all. So we will get the message, uh, these uh, breakout rooms will be closed in five minutes. So quickly I'm giving you the demonstration of this experiment. So next we have a procedure. The procedure we follow uh, in the classroom for the real lab. And the simulator procedure is also there. What, we, what steps we have to do in simulation. So in third, we have a short animation video. This animation video is related to the simulation, what we are going to simulate. This all we have in this short video. Now the main highlight is the simulator. So how we can uh, uh, explain area of trapezium in the classroom. So what is this? Uh, in the left-hand side, we will have uh, instructions. So instruction is create a trapezium. First instruction is create a trapezium ABCD by providing length of two bases. So I'm providing length of first base as four and uh, second base as five and uh, height length I'm using five. So what we have to do, enter the, all the sides and then draw trapezium. So I'm clicking on draw trapezium. So my trapezium has drawn. So the next step is to create the replica of this trapezium. So I have to just click on the existing trapezium. So I got uh, another trapezium, just a replica of previous trapezium. So what we are going to do, we are just uh, uh, showing that uh, with the help of parallelogram, we are now this with the help of area of parallelogram, we are finding area of trapezium. So 
With the help of these two trapeziums, we are making one parallelogram. And then to find the area of one trapezium, we will uh, take half of the area of parallelogram. So in the bottom, we have our observation and we have inference here. What we are going to explain. So area of this trapezium ABCD will be just half of the area of the parallelogram. And what is the area of parallelogram is? Area of parallelogram will be is will be base into height and base is b2 plus b1 is here and height is 5 centimeter so what is the area of trapezium now half into sub of parallel sides into height that is half into b1 plus b2 into h so that you can uh, explain in the classroom we get this inference because uh, in the classroom this activity with the help of we have the Students were used to uh, use the cutting and pasting the book, but with the help of this virtual lab, student can get the just uh, uh, accurate measurement with the help of just clicking on it. So virtual labs are very useful. So next we have self evaluation. Uh, some self evaluatory questions related to the topic, they can give their answers. And then we get the feedback. So which answers are correct and those who are wrong, we get the feedback. And uh, in the last, we have a reference. Some references are also there. And feedback, this feedback, this is for teachers and students. They can give their feedback. The, what uh, they like uh, in the experiment and what they do like in the experiment. So, I want to show some more experiments of different classes. Okay. Okay. What steps of first type fiction? So, we will get this home page. Then, last part virtual labs. Click on explore. We get this. Okay. So, I'm showing one of the experiments from class 10, mathematics. Right inside, we have a table of content for each and every topic. You can click and just check in which topic we have explanation resources because in explanation resources, we have simulations. Okay. So if you don't get uh, any simulation, then you uh, can also click on more experiments. In, because in more experiments, we are all uh, having simul uh, simulations. So I'm explaining one of one more topic quickly. Volume of a sphere. So volume of a sphere is first we give the objective of the topic, and then procedure, animation, short video with no sound, and then the simulator. Maybe some network issues. Yes, we got it. Can anybody help me to simulate this particular topic? Can any can anyone unmute themselves, please? Yes, I got one message. Ma'am, could you please share the link for attendance? I got disconnected. Okay. Attendance form. Yes, please voluntarily. I want one participant who wants to do this. Okay. Please unmute yourself. Can see many participants, so I want uh, uh, Itam, sir. Itam, Larimba, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Can you read the instructions for me and uh, make this uh, learning more uh, interactive? Yes, sir. 
Pitam sir. Pitam Narayan sir. From Manipur. Okay, we are closing the room. Yes, madam. Okay, sir, yes. can you help me to simulate this simulation? Uh, can you uh, please read the instructions? I think room is closing now. Generate a sphere of diameter 2R okay. and 2 cylinders of height 2R each. So to generate this cylinder, we, yes, we have tools. So we will just yes. click on generate cylinders. So we got, okay. yes. The next instruction, sir, please read. Use, use check boxes in the toolbox to generate a sphere and two cylinders. We will generate sphere. Right? Okay. So next, now we have to click on next to proceed. Yes, sir? Yes, okay. So we will click on next. So what we are going to do, so can you please explain? Now click on the jug to fill the hollow sphere completely with the sand. Yes. So click on jug. We are clicking on jug. Okay. 